Welcome. This is another in a series of videos with Aubrey Daniels from Aubrey Daniels International based on the book, Oops, Management Practices That Waste Time and Money and What to Do About Them. In this video, we'll talk about the annual ritual that most companies put their employees through that employees and managers both hate. We're talking about performance reviews. Oh, it's that time of the year again. 80-20 rule. In this case, what does the 80-20 relate to? Well, as it relates to uh, performance appraisal, it's that uh, 80% of the people think they're in the top 20%. Everybody's uh, above average. <laughs> that's what Garrison Keeler would yes. say. On. <laughs> uh, and there are a number of issues with performance reviews. I love the possibility we could talk people into stopping them. One is that we don't do them on time. Yeah. Well, it, that tells you it's a negative process for everybody involved. I mean, we, we try to put them off as long as we can. I, I know many, many cases where people haven't gotten a review in two or three years. You know, why would we do something that everybody hates to do? The, uh, the So why? Well, why do them? Well, I mean, you know, you're, I guess I know why you're doing them. You're trying to use them as a way to remind people of their shortcomings so you can get more productivity out of them. Yeah. Well, the best job I'll ever have, and most, you know, people that I'm around will never have it, is one where you know at the end of every day how well you've done. When 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 you start when you take a bad process and do it more often, it doesn't make it better. And that's exactly what people are beginning to do. Say, well, an annual performance appraisal, maybe the problem is we need to do it more often, so they do it quarterly. And people don't get over being upset by the previous one before they have to do it again, so they're just constantly upset. And and the, the, their pay is probably tied to it too. Well, in many cases, uh, organizations are trying to. They say we want to separate the appraisal process from the pay. Now, come on. You know, anybody knows that over a period of time, there's got to be some relationship between the way you're appraised and the way you're paid. So it's kind of a, a, a false issue as far as I'm concerned. In fact, in some companies, those who uh, worship uh, the Jack Welch altar, uh, it's there, there's, there's consequences because in the Welch business model, the bottom 10% have to be whacked every year. It's a requirement. Well, you know, he uh, he said to the board of directors a number of years ago that you want to eliminate the bottom 10% every year. Uh, and so, there must be 10%. You must yeah, right, find it. Right. Well, you know, I think he, he's got a new wife, and I think she's meddled him a little bit because I've heard him speak lately, and he kind of changed that. Really? Says, well, you need to work with them. You're not necessarily No eliminated. kidding. Well, one of the reasons was that, that a lot of companies got in trouble when they filed his model because they got sued. Ford Motor Company was sued uh, by the unions, and uh, it was a multi multi million dollar settlement because they found that uh, it was uh, it was discriminatory so Susie Welch is responsible for well I, she probably is you know to some extent <laughs> well nevertheless you do have to get, provide feedback to employees in, in your book it's got to be done in a positive way that's the whole point yeah. if you want more uh, results that's a critical part of how to do it so how do you do it well what you want to do is to develop uh, measures for everybody uh, around what you want them to do and have a way of continuously uh, measuring that so that they know how well they're doing. Uh, and uh, we, we want the goal, you see, the problem with performance appraisal is not its frequency so much as it is the assumptions underlying it. And that is that only a small percentage of people are really our top performers. I have a consulting company, and if somebody comes to me about wanting to do business, and I say, well, now, do you want one of our best performers or do you want one of our average performers? I mean, that would be ridiculous. I'll give you, a, I'll give you a good deal on one of the low performers. <laughs> you know, we want everybody to be the best, and, and this system prevents you from doing that. In other words, there's no way that everybody is going to be a top performer. And so we don't work day to day to create that kind of environment. So you're a manager, and uh, under this old-fashioned common system, you're ranking people, and you're you're pushing them, and you're trying to, uh, you know, point out the areas for improvement. So under a more productive system, what is a manager doing? Well, the manager is is working with people day to day. A coach. A coach. You're being a coach to people rather than. An evaluator. In other words, 
how can I help that person do better? That's my job, and that's what I should be measured on. How well am I helping people? How, how am I producing outstanding performers? And to the extent that we have people that do that, then they're very valuable to the organization. Does the man this requires one-on-one -on -one time managers to employees? There are ways to have the performer actually measure themselves. And where you can come in uh, huh. at the end of the month and sit down with them, spend, you know, uh, we've done this where we spend 15 minutes to 30 minutes a month with somebody talking about how they've done, what, what they might be able to do the next year, next month to improve on what they did the previous month. True or false, you, a manager will do better if he or she understands an employee's personal situation, personal goals, personal uh, outlook, uh, priorities, all that. Is that uh, worth spending time, quality Absolutely. time on? Absolutely, because uh, the idea is that I take a job to help me do things in my life. And so to the extent that a supervisor can help me accomplish that, then I'm going to be more loyal, more productive, more energetic than I would be if, the, if, the, if I'm treated as a number. Last question, uh, not in the book, but I'm curious on your feedback. Um, analyzing top performing companies, which uh, I had an opportunity to do several times, a number of them use peer groups to rate, police, give feedback, whatever, on each other. Do you find that that is positive or not? Well, uh, it's not universally a positive thing. You know, the whole idea of 360 feedback uh, is, is very common these days. Mm -hmm. But the problem is that people are not trained, number one, very well in terms of how to do that. And we have all kind of personal uh, uh, issues that, uh, that become involved in that. Um, we need some, some feedback as to how people, for how a manager or supervisor is being responded to or how people see it. In other words, if you work for me, how do you look at me in terms of helping you do the job? And if you have a problem with that, and if I have several people have a problem with that, then there needs to be some point of data to tell uh, management that. It does get back, though, to the manager being the coach, trying to lift them up, right. use training, use positive reinforcement, as opposed to rankings and yeah, negative well, feedback. You know, if you think of a coach, you hire a coach. Tiger Woods has a coach for the explicit purpose of helping him do better. And that's the way a manager or supervisor should be evaluated. How well are you helping people do better? Period. Aubrey Daniels. Aubrey, thank you. This is another in a series of videos from Aubrey Daniels International based on the book Oops, Management Practices That Waste Time and Money and What to Do Instead. It's available now online at aubreydaniels.com.